Hi guys, this is Nick. I'm a software design teacher and we're making videos today on doing JavaScript through Minecraft. So this content is mostly targeted towards Australian students in year seven and eight, uh, although it can be referenced in many different things. Uh, the Australian curriculum points are mostly points 29, 30 and 32 in the digital technology syllabus. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on points 30 and 32, which is about working online safely and working with algorithms. Okay, we have a few things that we're going to be working on today in Minecraft. We're going to do the first activity using JavaScript uh, to do a, um, a simple thing called chicken rain. I'm going to start that out now by introducing you to the interface if any of the students um, haven't got to that point yet. So what you should see on my screen now is my login to Minecraft. Okay, now you'll be able to see that I've got um, my cursor here. You can see that my characters um, are able to watch me. Okay, that's me set up right now. When I click on play, it's going to present me with my new interface screen. Okay, and what I want to do first is create a new world because when I'm creating these new different things, I want to be able to have a world where I can experiment and I can make mistakes and I can build things and destroy them quickly. And if I'm building a major project, I don't want to make my code accidentally destroy that. Okay, so when you're doing these coding activities, you should always use a new creative world that has uh, all blank in it, ready to be destroyed and broken and rebuilt and redesigned over and over again. So here's our initial setup settings. I'm going to click on create new. It's going to move, whoops, I'll click create new and I'll push new. You'll be presented with this screen. Okay, so I can see my world and I'm going to call it coding trials. Okay, I'm going to set it to be creative. Okay, we don't want any survival stuff. Remember when we're working online, we're staying safe. I'm going to start my world out being in peaceful mode. In a few of the later lessons, we'll move on and we'll change that to a different mode so that we can add some different details to it. But for the beginning, today what we're going to do is we're going to start it with being in creative and peaceful. The next thing I want to do, and probably one of the most important, is that my world type is not infinite. My world type is going to be flat. Okay, and I want that to be the case so that I don't have trees and rivers and everything in my way. Just got a nice big flat area to practice my coding. Okay. Um, having showing coordinates, um, I'm going to get people to turn that on because that can be helpful for us later on. But we're going to make it so it's always day and we're going to turn our classroom settings on too. It makes it a bit easier if we don't have to work in the rain so we've got perfect weather. And I want to turn our damage and PVP off because we don't want to have any of those things going right now. So once you've got those settings configured, you've got your flat world, we're creative, it's peaceful. You can go ahead and click play and then we'll be able to start our first lesson. Okay, so as you can see as my world starts to spawn, I've got a giant, big, flat, empty area where there's nothing that's going to get in my way. Okay, now when you're using Minecraft, it's a two-handed activity. I've got my left hand, which shows up on the right side. I've got my left hand on the W, A, S and D keys, which allows me to move forward, left, right, back. Okay, I've got my right hand on the mouse. Okay, now that allows me to turn my head so that I can actually turn around. I can do both of these at the same time so that I can move through the world. Okay, you can ignore all these other little characters for now. They'll just wander around and they'll have a good time, but we're not going to, we're going to leave them alone as well. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can hit F1 on your screen to bring up and hide the various different sections or help menus that are on your screen. I'm going to leave those off for now because uh, they'll just get in my way. But you're free to keep those on at any time. Okay, now, as I said, we're going to be doing a first coding activity. Now, we don't do coding in um, JavaScript through any sort of mods or any other external software. We use our program called Code Builder. Now, you can press Open Up Code Builder by simply typing C on the keyboard, C for Code Builder, and you'll be presented with a screen that looks like this. If you see a different one that asks you about Microsoft, just click on the Microsoft button and it'll take you to this one as well. Now you can see there's a number of different activities here. Most of these activities are targeted towards primary school level, so they tend to use this sort of structure, these little block activities there. Uh, in high school you're required to do the text-based coding and we're, that's what we're going to do now. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a new project, okay, and when we do that, we're going to change the first setting here 
so that instead of having blocks, JavaScript, and Python, we're going to change it so it has JavaScript only. Okay, now you can use Python and do this the very same way. I'm using JavaScript today, okay, and most of the activities will be based on that too. Okay, now the name of my project, I'm going to call it Chicken Rain. Okay, and I'm going to press Create. Now what that's going to do is that's going to start to generate my code builder interface. Now you can see that I've got half the screen on this side with my Minecraft world and half the screen on this side with my coding world. Okay, I might just make that a little bit bigger so you guys can see my numbers a bit better. I'm also just going to show you that I can flick between the sides of this screen. Okay, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, make it go on the left hand side or the right hand side. For now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so I can see my whole screen right now and I'm going to start typing in my first piece of code. Now you do have a whole bunch of toolbars where you can click on these different things and drag them and drop them so that it creates different features. Okay, you can click on these other blocks and it will put them into the right sections for you. Okay, in the right syntax or the right rules of the language but it does mean that you're not really focused on the text as much. Okay, so what, I'm what I encourage my students to do and what I'm encouraging you guys to do is use that text as well. So my first lesson, now it doesn't matter how many enter carriage returns you put here, it's always important to have lots of big space when you're creating your code. So I'm gonna start just here on line two, for example, and I'm gonna start writing in my code. Now as you noticed, as you notice there, when I start typing it in, the computer sort of starts to predict what is it that you are trying to type. Now if, you, uh, if it chooses the right thing, you can push tab and it's gonna actually populate the rest of that data. Okay, so in our player.onChat, what I want to happen is I want it to say, when I type in chicken, okay, I'm gonna start a function. All right, now, oops. Anytime you create a function like this, you need to have something closing it. You also need to have the data within the function. Now brackets can become a problem for a lot of students. Notice I've got these brackets over here and I'm closing off the first bracket. Can you see when I highlight here that the matching brackets correspond to each other? Now everything in between these curvy ones or what's known as braces, that's where all my code's gonna go. Okay, so that's what I want to have there. Now I only want one simple line of code. We're going to create a chicken to rain. We're going to make it appear above us. So we're going to use a mob and we're going to make it mobs.spawn. Okay, now when I push tab, it automatically populated with the rest of the data. So I might just do that again and show you. As I type mobs.spawn, oops, spawn, you see that it starts to guess what I want. If I push tab on the keyboard, it automatically puts a few things in. The first one here, the first argument is chicken. Now that's the type of mob that we want to spawn. Now that is correct, so we're going to leave that. Now the next one, pos000. Now the pos stands for position. Okay, so where is this chicken going to appear in my game? Now that position is relative to the user. That means it's going to happen this many blocks Oops. this many blocks in front of you, this many blocks above you, and this many blocks to the side of you. Now we don't obviously want to have it appear inside us, so I'm going to change it so that it appears 10 blocks above us, so above our heads right now. Okay, now that's all I've done right now. I've got an on chat command called chicken. When I type that in, it's going to execute this line, oops, it's going to execute this line of code. Okay, so I'm going to push play, and what you'll see is my code builder will now disappear. And all I have to do to make it work is open up my chat window. Now many people that use Minecraft regularly will know that to type in chat, all you have to do is press the letter T and your chat commands will appear. You'll see down here, uh, you'll see down here I can type in chicken. Okay, now when I push enter, you'll see that as I look up, I've got a little chicken that's just spawned above my head. Just one little guy there. Okay, if I open up chat and I type it again, as I look it up, you'll see my next chicken appear. Now I can type that as many times over and over and over again as I want, but if you want more chickens, we can add additional features to the code. So there is one thing you can do that's pretty easy if you just simply highlight that text, copy it, and paste it again over and over, then that's one way that you can be doing it. Okay, but what if you wanted more than that? What if you wanted 
a hundred chickens or ten chickens or even a thousand chickens okay you don't want to have to keep doing that over and over so what we want to do this time is we want to make it so that the computer just does whoops, just does this line of code over and over and over again a certain number of times now in order to do that that's called using a loop or what we um, more the more appropriate term is called a repetition Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push that code down just a little bit more and I'm going to start writing in a loop on my code so that I can see what I want to do. Now, the best way to do it is to use, in my opinion, a for loop, F-O-R. So you're going to say for every time I do, the, uh, every time I repeat this loop, I want you to execute it every time in this, uh, execute this line of code inside it. Okay, so my first thing is going to be for, then I open up a bracket, and I say let i equals zero. Oops, not minus, i equals zero. Then I'm gonna have a semicolon, so I'm gonna start a number, a letter i, and I'm gonna start it counting from the number zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, and so forth. Now I'm gonna make it count up to five. Okay, and I'm gonna do it so it counts one at a time. Now you do that by doing i plus plus. So four, let i equals zero, i less than 5, i plus plus. Okay, so what that means is you're going to start a number at 0, you're going to count it up by going in 1s, 1, 2, 3, 4, until you reach the number 5. So that one in the middle is our limit. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to have everything that we want to happen over and over again inside that loop. So that doesn't mean you put it inside this bracket or anything. It means you've got to open up a new bracket Okay, and, and you've got to close that bracket. Okay, now what you can see is I'm starting to get a lot of different extra brackets appearing and it can be a little bit tricky to see what those things look like. So what we can do is we can actually push tab and that will hopefully allow us to make our code look a little bit neater. Okay, so what I can see now, oops, that one shouldn't be there. Okay, what I can see now is I'm going to have a line of code that appears inside this loop with that loop having that number of instructions. Okay, and if I push play, you'll see that now when I open up my chat command and I type chicken and I scroll back, you'll see that I've now spawned five chickens. Okay, these little guys all appear one at a time and they all start to have a little bit of fun. Now you're probably asking why do I want to um, do just five? It was pretty easy to just go ahead and copy and paste that line five times. But what if I said I wanted, instead of five chickens, I want 500 chickens. Do you think it's gonna work the same way? Well, let's have a look. If I push play and now I go into my chat command and type chicken one more time, as I move back, you'll see that now my chickens are spawning pretty crazy and look at them all appearing. Now I've made that code appear 500 times. That line is happening over and over and over again. We're having a lot of fun now with that rain. Okay, so guys, you can always stop your code working at any time by pushing C and opening up your JavaScript code. There's the final code again for the lesson. You've got a player on chat command called chicken. You've got a loop that's occurring 500 times to make that spawn of that character appear. Okay, now you don't have to choose chicken. You might want to um, change it so that instead of chicken, maybe you want to do a horse. Okay, and instead of a horse down here, you have a horse there. So when I go back to my code now and I push play, okay, and I type in horse, now I've got a whole bunch of little horses having a lot of fun. Okay. So let's have a, another crack at some of those other ones. You can do quite a lot of them, okay? You, and you don't have to replace what code you've got there. You could highlight all of that code, copy it, press Control V to paste it again, and now you can do something else. Maybe you want to see a dolphin appear, and you've got a dolphin code now also happening, okay? So guys, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Make sure you're going through the activities and you're trying to get as many different characters as you can. Try to make it spawn into different locations. Okay, try to happen so that you can have multiple spawns all at the same time. 
Try not to go too overboard with the number of spawns. You don't want to have a thousand animals because it very quickly becomes a very populated world with a lot of characters. Um, you can have a cr cr crack at doing a few other activities with it as well. Okay, so for now, we'll leave it. The rest of you take care.